Hi everyone, I've got something really exciting to share with you today. If you've ever tried to write your own CFD code, then you've probably looked on the internet and found some examples of CFD codes there that you can use as examples. The problem with many of these examples on the internet is that they're often written in outdated languages like Fortran and they use methods like the finite difference method, which aren't really applicable today. And the codes you'll find on the internet often aren't very well explained as well, so it can be difficult if you want to write your own code. What I've done is I've actually written a new course to show you how you can write your own CFD code in MATLAB or Python using the finite volume method. This approach is a lot more modern and it's consistent with CFD codes that you use on a day-to-day -day basis like ANSYS Fluent, OpenFOAM or Star CCM. And also what I've done is I've taken a lot of time and effort to actually explain all of the stages in writing the CFD code as well. So when you go through it, you actually have a good understanding about what all the stages actually do so you can extend them for yourself. I've also covered some of the more tricky topics like the Ri and Chow correction and the different forms of the pressure correction equation that you might have to use in the CFD code and how these fit into the overall algorithm. So there really is a lot more detail than what you'll find if you just search on the internet. So if this is the kind of thing that's interesting for you and if you'd like to write your own CFD code, then stick around in this video and I'll explain in a bit more detail how the course is actually structured and what you might expect if you sign up. But of course, if you're not interested, if you don't really want to write your own CFD code, if you're happy just carrying on with the tools that you use already, of course, this video isn't for you. So you don't need to bother watching the rest of the video. You can just click off and go watch something else. And of course, uh, I'll continue with my regular detailed lectures on YouTube. So you can just wait around for those lectures. And I've got some more uh, really good lectures coming up soon. So those will be more applicable for you. But if you are interested in the course and writing your own CFD code, then stick around through this video and I'm now gonna jump in and just show you a bit more detail about how I've structured this course and what you can expect. When putting together the course, I actually spent quite a lot of time talking to friends and colleagues about different teaching styles and how they felt they learnt best at school and university and I've used some of these techniques in the course for you. More specifically, what I decided to do was to keep the lectures short and concise. So to keep them to a length of maybe 15 to 20 minutes each and to cut out all of the excess uh, information that's often provided in lectures that really isn't needed. So the lectures are very short and concise and they're delivered on a whiteboard, much like you might be used to in school and university. And alongside these lectures, I decided to provide lecture handouts to go with the lectures. And the reason for this is so that you don't have to be furiously writing down everything from the whiteboard lecture as you go along and you can actually pay attention to the information that's being delivered. But rather than just providing complete handout lectures as many lectures do, because that often results in you just switching off and not really paying attention because you've got all the information there, the lecture notes I've put together are actually interactive. And what I mean by interactive is that they have a series of true and false questions and a few answer boxes as you go through the lecture notes. So as you're watching the lecture, you have to fill in some short questions as you go along to really help keep your attention and to make sure that you've absorbed and understood all the information as you go along. And these interactive lecture notes, you can either print them out and write in them by hand, or you can just save the PDF files directly. You can have them open on your screen alongside the lecture as you're viewing it and fill in your answers and save. So by the time you finish the lecture, you actually have that full complete set of lecture notes and you've absorbed and understood all of the material while going along. And the next thing that I've done alongside this is as soon as you finish the lecture, we go straight into a short five minute problem class with just one or two quick questions which really uh, give you an opportunity to apply the formulae and the information that was provided right away in the lecture so that you can actually have a go at calculating some of the tricky quantities like the pressure gradient and mass flow rate and make sure that you have understood all the terms in the formulae correctly because that can often be missed as you go through lectures. 
So the problem class has happened straight away as soon as you've finished the lecture and they're only five minutes. So you go straight in, apply the formulae and then you move on. And so you're not bogged down in an hour long problem class, just filling in and working out numbers as you go along. So this is the approach that the course uses. It's short, concise and to the point and so that your attention is, is hooked the entire way through the lecture. And by the end of the course, of course, some of you may want further reading as well. The concise lectures may not be enough and you may want more detail. And of course, I've also provided a full detailed course textbook to go alongside the lectures. So if at any point you think, oh, actually, I'd like to have the more detailed information on that part of the course, you can just open up the textbook and go to the section where you can find all of the information and also references to the original sources if you ever want to go back through the history and look those up. And then, of course, finally, to finish the course, once you've understood all of the key information in the lectures and you've understood all of it, I then provide MATLAB and Python code at the end of the course where we actually see the CFD code working in practice and the application of the simple algorithm for the pressure velocity coupling. That's at the end and I actually go through the code line by line in a video so that you understood all of it. Um, and the final thing to say about the code as well that's provided at the end of the course is rather than just providing a general code or a code that's only applicable to one problem, I've actually applied it to two problems and we'll be looking at the lid driven cavity flow which is a, a square or rectangular cavity enclosed by walls on all sides with a moving lid that drives the flow in a recirculating pattern and also a classic channel flow with an inlet at the left and an outlet at the right with flow passing along the channel and developing the boundary layers. And the reason I chose to go through these two problems in the course is that they really cover the common types of boundary condition. So you'll have a good understanding of how wall boundaries work, how moving walls work, and also velocity inlets and pressure outlets as well. And so this will really give you that complete foundational understanding of how CFD codes actually work uh, in practice when you're writing your own. If you like the sound of the course and you want to get access, then I've decided to host the course on Teachable. And there's a link in the description of this video, which you can just click on and follow if you want to get access to the course. Now, what I've managed to do is I've managed to get an early bird discount. So if you decide you like the sound of the course and you sign up in the first month, there'll be a discount on the price there. And the other thing I've managed to do as well is throw in free access to my Inkscape course alongside the discount as well. And my Inkscape course will teach you how I create all of the graphics uh, and images for my YouTube slides and also for the course and the course textbook as well. So you'll get that thrown in as well if you sign up uh, in the first month. Now, I imagine many of you would probably like to have a go at this new teaching style before jumping into the course. And I'm really convinced you're gonna really like it and find it really useful. So what I've decided to do is later this week, I'm gonna put out another video on YouTube where I'll upload one of the lectures from the course directly to YouTube uh, with the lecture notes and things. So you can actually have a go at the teaching style and try following along with the lecture with the interactive lecture notes to see how it's going to work. And I'm sure you're gonna find it a really, uh, a really good teaching style. So definitely as well, stick around till later in the week if you're not sure if this is for you and you can have a go at the teaching style for yourself and, uh, and see if you like it. I just wanted to finish things off with a few technical aspects of the course and to address some questions which you might have before jumping in. The first thing I wanted to note is that, of course, in a CFD code, there are a number of different pressure velocity coupling mechanisms that can be used to solve the Navier-Stokes and continuity equations. But the method I've decided to use in this course is the simple algorithm. And the reason for choosing this particular algorithm over some others is that simple was really one of the original algorithms and is available in the majority of CFD codes. And for your understanding of CFD codes, you can really understand some of the other algorithms like simplec or PISO or coupled as natural extensions of the simple algorithm. So for your understanding of how a CFD code works and everything's put together, I decided specifically to use the simple algorithm 
as it's a core algorithm from which you can develop your understanding. The other thing I decided to do in terms of variable storage, and you may see this if you look into CFD codes or look some of them up on the internet, is I decided to use a co-located variable storage for my teaching. And briefly what that means is that all of the flow variables are stored and calculated at the centroid of the cells in the mesh. And the reason for choosing this approach is that's what modern CFD codes do. They all use a co-located variable approach. And of course, some of the codes which you may find on the internet use a staggered variable approach instead, where the velocity and the mass flow rate are actually calculated and stored at the face centers instead. But that's really more of an, an older technique, and I decided to actually go with the modern technique of the co-located variable storage, because it will be much more useful for you when you're understanding how CFD codes actually work. So that's the real, the second technical aspect of the course. And for those of you who are interested, I do include a copy of some equivalent staggered variable storage code with the course as well. So if you are looking back and you want to actually make a comparison and understand the differences, uh, you can make that comparison as well. And finally, I wanted to say that with this course, my aim is to keep it very short and concise and to actually just give you the refined understanding that you need without a lot of excess information. And so for this reason, many aspects of CFD codes I've decided not to include in the course. Things like uh, non-orthogonal corrections, for example, and different types of uh, advection discretization scheme. Um, I've not included in the course and I've just left signposts in the course so that you understand how they fit in and where to look for more detail. Um, and so this allows me to keep the course concise and focused on the fundamental aspect of the pressure velocity coupling that you really need to understand uh, to understand CFD codes. And then when you've got that, you can just follow some of the references in the course for further reading to find out how these additional aspects of the core CFD algorithm work. Now, of course, CFD is very complicated and I imagine many of you may have some more technical questions or general questions about the course that you'd like to know before, before getting involved. And if you have any of those questions, just leave them in the comments section below because that way I can address them and everyone can see uh, the answer for everyone's benefit. So definitely go ahead and do that, particularly with technical questions which you may have. And finally, I wanted to say just before wrapping up that I've spent a long time, I've spent over two years developing this course and I'm really hoping that it's a fantastic teaching and learning tool for the CFD community. And I hope that you're gonna really like it. I know you're gonna find it really valuable and want to share it with your friends and colleagues as well. And so I'm actually really excited to be bringing you this course. Um, and so once again, as always, thanks for following with the channel. And if you're looking to get on the course, just follow the link below in the description and I'll see you on Teachable. And I'm really looking forward to hearing your technical comments and uh, conversing with you on the course as well.